All right, I want to check back in with my co-anchor Nicole Brady out at Empower Field ahead of the Taylor Swift concert tonight. And we know all too well the impact Taylor Swift has had on some of our co-workers, Nicole. Hard to concentrate leading up to tonight, but whether you're a Swifty or not, uh, the economic impact is jaw dropping and hopefully everyone will benefit from that. It's a gold rush, uh, Brian, uh, to quote another song. Their economists at Denver's Common Sense Institute predicted as much as a $200 million economic impact when all is said and done from these two days, two shows. We're talking about everything that would include here, but that would be more than the $25 million impact that was predicted for the Nuggets championship. Now, uh, that number may have been higher than that in the end, uh, uh, but we're talking Super Bowl numbers here, really, in terms of economic impact. And we explained and, and talked to someone about everything that really is is that people are spending money on. That includes lodging, that's looking at retail, merchandise, restaurants, the travel for all of those concert goers. Some people are coming from out of state, people from Wyoming, all across the country, and many within Colorado. So we know this is a big boon to the Denver economy, and we can't wait to see if we were right at the end of this. Yeah, 38 million of that 200 million would just be ticket sales alone. And to put that in some perspective, that 63% of the total in all of 2022 at Red Rocks that was spent on tickets for concerts there. Uh, so just unbelievable. Fortune reported that overall the ERA's tour could have as much as a $5 billion impact on consumer spending in the U.S. alone before it goes international. Uh, we saw in Chicago occupancy rates uh, broke an all-time weekend record uh, when the concert was there. Las Vegas also reported its highest hotel occupancy since the pandemic started because of the Taylor Swift concert there. So just a, a humongous boost uh, wherever she goes. And Denver 7's Veronica Acosta is joining us now to talk about the impact that Taylor Swift has. Um, if you are looking for a ticket, Veronica, we know you're going to want to be careful. Uh, it, the, the, the prices are very high and there are certainly scammers to watch out for as well. Uh, there certainly are. I know we've been talking about this for weeks. What are the things that you have to watch out for if you're trying to get some Taylor Swift tickets, maybe off Facebook or a site like that? And what do you have to know if you're going to go on to Ticketmaster and just ultimately pay that really high price? Well, we spoke to the attorney general yesterday. We asked him what he wanted people out there to know. We know, of course, thousands of people weren't able to get tickets to the Taylor Swift concert because it is just so coveted. So, of course, many of them resorting to places like Facebook, those pages to try and get their hands on some of those cheap tickets. And his big words of advice were, if it seems too good to be true, you guys, then unfortunately it probably is. We know in other stadiums, people showed up even offering backstage passes, and it was all a fraud. If someone says to you, I will charge you $500 for a backstage pass, just send me money on Venmo, think this is danger. If you want to get a ticket, you really got to go through the normal channels. And the attorney general there urging caution when buying, again, tickets on platforms like Facebook. He recommended being really vigilant about where you go and where you end up paying from. He said cash apps, those can be the biggest red flags and you heard him say there just a minute ago. Unfortunately, it seems the absolute safest way the, to buy some tickets is to just go through a channel like Ticketmaster. But again, Nicole, we know just how expensive those can be. Yes, Veronica, we, we, they are so expensive. They've dropped a little bit closer to concert time. And in fact, an hour before the concert might be the best time to get a ticket if you still want to go, according to experts. Brian Sanders has been tracking yeah. those prices, I know. Yeah, I'm actually interested to see how it unfolds the next couple of hours because mm -hmm. we've already seen ticket prices come down from more than a thousand yesterday. Uh, we are checking on StubHub and right now it's 764 for their cheapest ticket. Um, again, that's even down 50 bucks in the last 30 minutes. SeatGeek 703 and on TickPick prices are holding steady at 890. Again, that includes all the fees that maybe you don't see with some of the other ticket prices and those can really add up. Also watch out where 
those tickets are located, the seats, because some of them are behind the stage. Uh, but if you want to go, that's kind of what's available right now. Also keep in mind this morning, we are asking you with that kind of money, uh, what would you spend more than $500 to do right now? You can choose your answer on our Denver 7 viewer poll, denver7.com slash vote now. You can also scan the QR code right there on your screen. And your options are to see another concert like Taylor Swift, maybe a live theater event like a Broadway show, a sporting event like the Super Bowl. Maybe treat yourself to a fancy dinner, which uh, everyone looks like they're skipping on or a spa day or just no thanks. I'll save it, which uh, is leading overwhelmingly right now. Maybe a sign of the times, but for those who want to spend the money, another big name concert is leading. Well, back in 2018, Taylor Swift became the first ever female artist to perform at Empower Field. Take a look at these images from the Reputation Tour that the stadium posted ahead of this weekend shows quite the scene there with the crowd and the pyrotechnics and the lights. We've already seen the stage set up at Empower Field for this weekend shows. And if we look through the brief history of the concerts at Empower Field, all concerts, Taylor Swift is the only artist, artist in stadium history to sell out two shows on a single tour. 